Welcome to another podcast. And what I'm going to do something totally different. On December the 5th, 2007, yes, it's been 13 years, I lost a very dear lady, and one of the things I try to remember is some of our go-to scriptures. One was, be not deceived, God is not mocked, whatsoever man so that shall he also reap. But one of our other ones, which was a con- was that of, be not overcome of evil, with evil, but overcome evil with good. Romans 12 and 21. So what I want to do is I want to dedicate this podcast to the lady that had hands and hand raising me all my life until God said it was to God said well done my good and faithful servant. I am talking about my mother the late Mary R. Smith born in Coweta, Oklahoma or some may say Coweta to Anthony E., where I got part of my name from, and Ida Hall. She was born September 18, 1934, like I said, in Coweta, Oklahoma. She was part of a family that was very well known, the Hall family, which was one of those upright Christian families. And they, I can say they did a good job, whether we stayed the course or not, they did a good job passing those principles down. You could tell that they were that family that really believed in the word of God, even by the names of the siblings. My mom's name was Mary Ruth. So she got two biblical names right there. Uh, the latest of my aunties that passed away, my Aunt Martha Hall. Martha, another one of those biblical names. I had an Aunt Phoebe. I had an Aunt Liz or Elizabeth. I had an Uncle Dan or Daniel. Uncle David. Uncle John. You, you, you get the picture. But everybody knew this Hall family. So... What I want to do is honor the lady that raised me because I think that this particular passage in Romans 12 and 21 sums up who she was. I believe she hung her hat on this passage of scripture. So what I want to do is share the scripture with you and then I'm going to dive into the commentary on it. But it's Romans 12 and 21 and I can just hear her as plain as as if she's talking right now. Because in sharing this with you, I've never seen her want to extract revenge on anyone for any wrongdoing so here is the scripture Romans 12 and 21 and it reads thus be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good let me back up to this 19th verse and lead you back into that 21st verse 
19 verses, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. I don't know how many times I've heard my mom quote that scripture, whether it be in a church setting, whether it be in rehearsals and they call your names, you have to give a verse. That was her go-to. Anyone who knows my mom knows that she always had a smile on her face. On average, people would tell you, I've never seen Mother Smith, Sister Smith, you know, all the names. I've never seen her upset. And y'all didn't stay in the household like I did. Let me do something wrong. She handled it. But that passage basically breaks it down like this. Since men became enemies of God, they have been very ready to be enemies one to another. And those that embrace religion must expect to meet with enemies any world whose smiles seldom agree with Christ. Recompense to no man evil for evil. That is a brutish recompense, befitting only animals, which are not conscious of any being above them or of any existence hereafter. And not only do, but study and take care to do that which is amiable and credible and recommends religion to all with whom you converse. Study the things that make for peace, if it be possible, without offending God and wounding conscience. Avenge not yourselves. This is a hard lesson to corrupt nature. Therefore, a remedy against it is added. Give place unto wrath. When a man's passion is up and the stream is strong let it pass off lest it be made to rage the more against us the line of our duty is clearly marked out and if our enemies are not melted by preserving kindness we are not to seek vengeance they will be consumed by the fiery wrath of, of that God to whom vengeance belongeth the last verse suggests what is not easily understood by the world, that in all strife and contention, those that revenge are conquered, and those that forgive are conquerors. Be not overcome of evil. Learn to defeat ill designs against you, either to change them or to preserve your own peace. He that has this rule over his spirit is better than the mighty. God's children may be asked whether it is not more sweet unto them that all earthly good that God so enables them by his spirit thus to feel and act. Another look at that also says like this, be not overcome of evil. Be not vanquished or subdued by injury received from others. Do not suffer your temper to be excited, your Christian principles to be abandoned, your mild, amiable, kind, and benevolent temper to be ruffled by any opposition or injury which you may experience. Maintain your Christian principles amidst all opposition and thus show the power of the gospel. They are overcome by evil who suffer their temper to be excited, who become enraged and revengeful, and who engage in contention with those who enter them, Proverbs 16 and 22. But overcome evil with good, that is, subdue or vanquish evil by doing good to others. If that was not my mother right there, Show them the loveliness of a better spirit, 
the power of kindness and benevolence, the value of an amiable Christian deportment. So doing, you may disarm them of their rage and be the means of bringing them to better minds. This is the noble and grand sentiment of the Christian religion. Nothing like this is to be found in the pagan classics, and nothing like it ever existed among pagan nations. Christianity alone has brought forth this lovely and mighty principle, and one design of it is to advance the welfare of man by promoting peace, harmony, and love. Once again, that's my mom right there. The idea of overcoming evil with good never occurred to people until the gospel was preached. It has been acted on except under the influences of the gospel. Let me retract that. It never has been acted on except under the influences of the gospel. On this principle, God shows kindness. On this principle, the Savior came and bled and died. And on this principle, all Christians should act in treating their enemies and in bringing a world to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. If Christians will show benevolence, they will send forth proofs of love to the ends of the earth. The evils of the world will be will be overcome. Nor can the nations be converted until Christians act on this great and most important principle of their religion on the largest scale possible to overcome evil with good. Once again, I want to say that this podcast se- session today is dedicated to the loving memory of my mother, the late Mary Ruth Smith. Born in Coweta, Oklahoma, September the 18th, 1934, but was called home from labor to rest December the 5th, 2007. In closing out, I just want to say I appreciate my mom for also doing her part in imparting the word of God in me, but not just imparting it with lip service, but also living out her Christian life, not only at the church, but also on her job. Whether it was at God's potato chip, yep, I had to throw that in there because she used to work there. Whether it was on the school board as a paraprofessional. I believe another scripture that would fit her was Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. She carried a smile. Probably sometimes when it was hard to smile. But talk to anybody, and the first thing they will tell you, Mother Smith, Sister Smith, whatever you, they called her, Mama Smith, she always had a smile on her face. Mother Smith never could say, never said, never heard her say a bad word about anybody. So, Mom, yes, you are gone, but you are not forgotten. And thank you for that timely word. Be not overcome evil with you, but overcome evil with good. I have to run at that sometimes. So what I want to say in closing, if you still have your mama, don't just tell your mama that you love her, but show her that you love her. Because when she's gone, it's too late. Thank God for the memories. Trips up and down the road to Oklahoma, the vacation trips. It's I can go on and on about all the times we've had. But like I said, this podcast is dedicated to the love and memory of my mama, who taught me so much, stayed on me about making sure I learned my Christmas speech. Because I was going to do a speech in church. There wasn't no ifs, ands, or buts or negotiating about it. Between her, and my dad. I believe they hung their hat on this. 
As for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. And I think, and I'm going to be closing this out here soon, unless the Spirit of God gives me some more to say, but I think we need to go back to some of the old principles because I believe if we have given children too much leeway, we have given them too many rights that they haven't even earned yet. Therefore, you see a lot of children disrespecting their parents and their grandparents, talking to them any kind of way. There was no way we could do that growing up. And maybe we need to bring back those days. But once again, in love and memory to my mom, thank you for all that you imparted in me and all the good home training. It's because of you and daddy both that I'm still saying to this day, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, no, yes, sir. No, sir. So, thank you. Thank you for the memories. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the chastisement. Thank you for everything. Because of your teaching, I'm still here today. Thank you for listening to this podcast. And I hope those that listen to it were inspired and enjoy it and share it.